I told you, we're not starting without your father. Dinner just isn't dinner without him. Oh, well, perhaps I could help simulate the experience. They're loving, caring, or just plain dysfunctional. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV families. For this list, we're taking a look at those television families that have cracked us up, filled us with envy, or have made us more grateful for the loved ones already in our lives. Not so fast, Tiger. Number 10. The Taylors, Home Improvement. Oh, honey, not now. Can't we wait till after dinner? With three boys, a wisecracking dad, and an equally sharp but loving mom, this TV family had something for everyone. In addition to Tim the Toolman Taylor's day-to-day -day antics and the endless patience of his wife, the three Taylor children developed their own unique identities with their own unique problems and growing pains. In a house full of testosterone, <laughs> there is still a great deal of tenderness and nuance underneath all the tough love. Do you know what special event we have coming up next week? You don't even have to ask me. I know what it is. You're bluffing. What is it? Our anniversary. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, Mr. Big Shot. What day of the week is it? <laughs> day of the week is it? That's easy. What day of the week is it? What day Friday. Of the week? Friday. Friday. Saturday. 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 <laughs> Number nine. The Connors, Roseanne. Breeze right there! What'd I tell you about killing your brother in the living room? They were the royal family of blue collar nobility. As a lower middle class family, their on screen struggles resonated with a wide demographic. Watching the family persevere through hardships or revel in small triumphs, it was easy to see why the show was so popular. Yeah, I was a stud, wasn't I? <laughs> yeah, what happened? <laughs> Some woman married me. Underneath all the sarcasm, and in spite of their various problems, they displayed a bond that can only come from surviving and enduring in the face of adversity. You think this is a magic kingdom where you just sit up here on your throne? Oh, yeah? Yeah! And you think everything gets done by some wonderful wizard. Oh, poop, the laundry's folded. Poop, dinner's on the table. You want me to fix dinner? Number eight, the Cleavers leave it to Beaver. My name's Beaver. Beaver? Is that your given name? Yes, ma'am. My brother given it to me. Many consider them the quintessential example of an all-American family. The Cleavers were a safe, suburban bunch with a milk toast lifestyle. With the adventures of one precocious young boy, Beaver, being the primary focus of the show, the Cleaver family was constantly central to almost every plot. Have you ever kissed any other married woman besides mom? <laughs> Themes like working hard and education were primary to the show, making it pretty much a guideline for how to exist in suburbia. Your mother and I both know that there are a lot of things to learn and a lot of things to accomplish before you're really grown up. Gee, Dad, when I came downstairs, I was feeling real good. Why did you have to go and say stuff like that? Number seven, The Simpsons, The Simpsons. Now, remember, as far as anyone knows, we're a nice, normal family. This animated clan has all the makings of a traditional American family, with three kids, a housewife, and the breadwinning father. But that's where the parallels end. Ah, Bart, how could you shock your little sister? My finger slipped. Ah, so did mine. For the most part, this nuclear family is anything but conventional. Between Homer's constant bumbling, Bart's perpetual mischievousness, Lisa's highbrow intellectualism, and Marge as the steadfast matriarch, the family members have stuck to their roles over the decades. Call me Daddy. Homer. Daddy. Homer. Daddy. Dad. 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 Yes? Domer. <laughs> Why, you little? Number six, the Tanners, Full House. I'm ready for school. Honey, you're ready for the prom. <laughs> you said this would be good. Hey, if you can't have fun with your little sister, then what's the point in having one? Three grown men raising three young girls in the hills of San Francisco seems reasonable, particularly when one is a musician and the other is a comedian. Everywhere I go, I hear those damn birds. Right? Although it may have seemed avant-garde, the show's themes weren't that unconventional. With the help of his two pals, a widower and his daughters live their lives together. And it's the love in the household that makes the scenario more believable. And I know how much you girls miss your mother. Because I miss her too. Very much. Number five, The Banks, 
the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. As long as you live in my house, you will abide by my rules. And that goes for the rest of you. <laughs> That's telling us, Dad. After moving to a high-end suburb to live with his wealthy extended family, Will Smith plays Will Smith, a street-smart Philly teen. While the show centers on his fish-out-of-water adjustment to his affluent and somewhat sheltered family, the entire Banks clan is grounded in their appreciation, or not, for Will. Steve, David, Henry, this is Will, my nephew by marriage. <laughs> the family evolves together, and in spite of butting heads, they grow thanks in part to Will's presence. It is amazing. You certainly have grown, Will. Well, we all have. <laughs> <laughs> Number four. The Seavers, Growing Pains. All right, lady, drop that spatula or your scrim. Go ahead. Make my day. <laughs> this all-American family had a teen heartthrob, a do-gooder sister, a con artist brother, and an infant that morphed into a six-year-old within two seasons. Hi, Carol! Add to that a psychiatrist father with an at-home practice and a busy journalist for a mom and the show was chock full of family-friendly shenanigans. Tell me, sir, isn't it unusual for a father and a son to attend a, a rock and roll concert together? No, no way, no, not in our family, not in any family that loves each other, right? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> we loved it. Number three, the Brady's, the Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch, that's the way we became the Brady Bunch. Having a blended family on TV was a bold move for the 60s. The eight-member family, which included six children and two adults, was comprised of a widower and his three sons, and a single mom and her three daughters. Any trouble in here? Oh no, everything's fine. 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 Add in their wry housekeeper. If there's anything I can't stand, it's a perfect kid. And six of them, yeah. And the Brady family wasn't exactly an example of Americana, but it was a glimpse into how the American family dynamic was shifting. What's the matter? I don't hear anything. What's the matter with that? Six kids and no noise. That's what's the matter with that. <laughs> Number two, the Keatons family ties. I guess the Parent of the Year award is pretty much out the window. Who knew ex-hippies with a conservative kid would make for good primetime TV? Clearly, the producers did, and the relationship of a family politically at odds with their own children is the heart of this series. I can't believe you guys can watch this. You look ridiculous. Half a million people trying to stop a senseless war. You find that ridiculous? I'm talking about the outfits. <laughs> Despite their differences, however, this TV family manages to stay dedicated to each other, even in the depths of the Reagan era. I haven't seen him this excited since Reagan was elected. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Yeah, Pebbles, don't cry. Daddy's gonna take you downtown. Oh, all right, all right, all right, all of you dumb me up, huh? And that's pretty much the way that summer went. I guess it was really my last summer of pure, unadulterated childhood. But, Peter, why would they make you president? Well, maybe it's because I can recite all 50 states in a quarter of a second. It's about Malcolm. I didn't do it. You see, I saw him. Listen to that dynamo. He's a chip off the old block. Thanks, Dad. Speaking of the old block, what's wrong with your head? Ha, <laughs> ha, uh -huh. Your mother likes to make jokes. I just got a deadline to meet, that's all. What's he mean he's got a deadline? He means he's going to be dead if he don't toe the line. <laughs> Money is funny. <laughs> Number one, The Huxtables, The Cosby Show. I'm Sandra, Denise's older sister. Alvin, Sandra's husband. Francine, Alvin's mother. Lester, father of Elvin. Grandma Anna. Her husband, Grandpa Russell on Cliff's side. Cliff is my husband, Denise's father. <laughs> it's nice to meet you all. Nice, nice to meet you, too. Too. Well. We're gonna go back into the kitchen now. We've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> Bye. 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 The Huxtable family forever changed the landscape of American sitcom television. This well-to-do Brooklyn-based family set the groundwork for future family sitcoms, representing a wholesome, well-structured, and diverse unit. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. There's no wonder you get D's and everything. The epitome of charm and baby soft humor, the Huxtables represented a different version of the American dream with their five kids, attorney mother, and physician father in the crazy sweaters. 
I am your father. I brought you in this world, and I'll take you out. <laughs> Do you agree with our list? Who's your favorite TV family? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. The picture can't happen today. My pimple's getting worse. Oh, honey, I am so sorry. Can you stand? Yeah. Well, then the picture's happening. It's all anybody's gonna see. I wouldn't be so sure about that.